All right, so a quick review for Chapter 7, Foundations of Math 20, Chapter 7. Um, in 7.1, we talked about characteristics of a quadratic function. Okay, so the, uh, it's degree 2, so that means on the x, we have an x squared. There's got to be an x squared in the equation, and of course, the coefficient can't be 0. It's got to be an x squared. The graph is a parabolic shape. Okay, we talked about that. Um, the y-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola is the maximum if it opens downward, and it, the y-value is a minimum if it opens upward. Okay, so we talked about that as well. The domain is XER, set of all real numbers, because it goes up forever, but it also goes to the left and to the right forever if you extend it. So the domain is XER. The range, would, if it opens up, it's greater than or equal to the range value of the vertex there, the y-value, or if it opens down, it's less than or equal to the y value on the vertex. Okay? And the axis of symmetry cuts the parabola uh, exactly in half. Okay, so 7.2 here, we talked about um, standard and factored form. So this is standard form for a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. And this is factored form, a times x minus r, x minus s. So the r and the s are the x-intercepts. Okay, so it would be if the x-intercepts were 2 and 4, this would show up as x minus 2 times x minus 4. Okay, so that's that form. There are some things, and again, if you, uh, uh, you know, for your cue card, if you're doing a cue card, uh, you can put some of this stuff on there. I think this would be a good place to start. Uh, you know, so there you go, x equals r and x equals s are the intercepts. The equation of the axis of symmetry, r plus s over 2. So you take the average of the intercepts, and that's going to be the very middle where the x value of the vertex will be. So this is all stuff that uh, we've talked about here. Okay. So to solve by graphing, remember there was two methods we went over to solve by graphing. The first one was if you have um, a, an equation, so this one for example here, if we had this equation, you would graph it and find the x-intercepts. Okay. If the graph is... Uh, if the graph looks like this, uh, in blue here, if the graph looks like this, then there are no solutions to the equation because there are no intercepts. If the graph looks like this and touches the x-axis just once, that means there is one solution or two identical x-intercepts. And if the graph, of course, is like this, there would be two solutions to the equation or two x-intercepts. Okay. The other method would be um, if you have, so if you had 2x squared equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. Something like that, uh, you could graph both sides, right? Graph both equations separately and then find their intersection point or points. That's a, a, another way that you could do that. So that was a second method that we talked about. Okay. Um, yeah, we didn't actually do this partial factoring method. Was not really. If you want to look at that, you can. Um, that's a lead into something else that we didn't really need to, to do. Mm -hmm. So the last half of this section, uh, we talked about uh, solving algebraically, and we furthered that. You could gra uh, you could sorry factor the equation, but you could also use something called the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is this right here. And you guys remember the song? You know, sing the song with me here. No, not A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No, that's the alphabet song. Oh, this one is X equals negative B plus or minus root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Pop. Yeah. All right. So that's how you remember the quadratic formula. And what this is is a shortcut from the standard form, A, where you have A, and you have the B, and you have the C. This is the shortcut to finding the solutions to the equation or to the roots uh, or the zeros of the parabola. And uh, if you plug in A, B, and C in the proper spots, you'll get an answer. Now, you may get an answer like this, right? This is an irrational answer. That's fine. You can write it as a decimal and round it if you want. Uh, but this is the proper way or the exact solution for one that's not uh, rational. Okay? All right. Um, finally, I think this is, is this finally? Oh, almost. The vertex graphing form. So we just take, took a look at a question like this in a review. The uh, equation, or sorry, the point, which is the vertex, in this form is hk. 
So if this was an example right here, the vertex would be positive 4. It's always the opposite sign there. Positive 4 plus 10. So 4, 10 would be the vertex. Remember, the A value tells you if it's positive, it opens upward. If it's greater than 1, it's going to be narrow. And if it's less than 1, it's going to be quite wide. Between 0 and 1, it's going to be quite wide. So that gives you an indication there. Okay? Um, okay, so you can read through some more of this um, uh, if you'd like. To find the y-intercept, you always just let x equal 0. Solve for y, so it's pretty easy. So you can always get the vertex and the y-intercept pretty easy from here. Okay. What about this one? Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyways, I guess you guys can read this. Um, yeah. Uh, it's just using the different forms and how do you graph or how do you know how to, to write it. If you were writing an equation, okay, if you were writing an equation and you had the vertex, you could plug it into vertex graphing form. Like I think we just did a question like this, right, from the review. So if you have the vertex, which we were given here, you could start with the vertex graphing form and plug H and K in like we did here. 3, 5, see that? Negative 5. And then solve for A and finish up your equation. If you're given the roots, start with the factored form with the Y equals A times X minus R times X minus S. Plug the roots in there, do the same thing. Pick another point um, and uh, solve for A. So you can, do, you can do that as well. Okay, do you guys have any questions at all about this chapter or about any part of it? Okay, so I'll just uh, I'll just take a moment just to show you the review questions just in case you're you get you get home and you don't have your textbook and you still want to do some questions here. And if you have any of these questions you'd like me to do in class, just get, no, I can do that for you too.